Hello, and this is Sunny. Welcome back. Today, my topic is three options of inter VLAN routing. As we know, each VLAN is a different and isolated broadcast domain. Hosts on separate VLANs are not able to communicate even if they are connected to the same switch. However, communications between different VLANs are necessary in many cases. In other words, we must find ways to route the traffic between different VLANs. This is known as inter-VLAN routing. Today, I would like to talk about three options of inter-VLAN routing. Option 1. Using a router. This option is a traditional approach. We need a physical router and connect each VLAN to a different physical router interface. Here we have three VLANs on this switch, VLAN 10, 20, and 30. Each VLAN has its own physical link connected to each different physical router interface. With this approach, the router does not need to know about VLANs. It just treats every single VLAN as every single different physical link. For example, computer A on VLAN 10 sends a packet to computer C on VLAN 30. The switch would deliver the packet to the router through the VLAN 10 link, and the router forwards the packet to the switch through the VLAN 30 link. Then the switch forwards it to computer C. Routing and switching are achieved. However, this traditional approach has a serious limitation. The number of physical interfaces on a router are limited and expensive. We need every cable going from the switch to the router for every single VLAN. This method works fine with two or three VLANs, but it is a challenge with many VLANs on a big network. To overcome this limitation, we use option two, router on a stick. Inter-VLAN routing. Router on a stick is a setup that consists of a router and a switch, which are connected using one Ethernet link configured as an AO2.1Q trunk. With this approach, the router must understand the concept of VLAN and the IEEE AO21Q standard. With the option one, each cable going from switch to the router is configured as access link. With router on a stick inter VLAN routing, we configured one single link as a trunk. Physically, we have only one interface on the router, but many logical sub interfaces are created. One sub interface per VLAN. Each sub interface is configured as a default gateway for each VLAN. When computer 1 on sales VLAN sends IP packet to computer 2 on finance VLAN, the switch would deliver it to the sales VLAN gateway, a logical sub-interface on the router. Then the router checks its routing table and forwards the IP packet to the computer 2 through the gateway of finance VLAN. Physically, there's only one link, but logically, there are two separate links in this example. Option 3. Multi-layer switch into VLAN routing. With the route on a stick approach, we need a router and we need a switch. But with a multi-layer switch, or sometimes we call a layer 3 switch, switching and routing are achieved inside one box. Multi-layer switches support switch virtual interfaces, or SVIs. SVIs are logical interfaces that can act as gateways and perform routing. They behave like physical interfaces on a router. They have IP addresses associated with their own VLANs, and they are completely virtual. Similar to a logical sub-interface on a router on a stick, one SVI can be created for each VLAN. There is one-to-one -one mapping between VLANs and their SVIs. When computer A on VLAN 10 wants to talk to computer C on VLAN 30, it sends the packet first to the multi-layer switch through its SVI. The switch checks its routing table and forwards the packet to computer C through its own VLAN SVI. 
I hope this video is helpful. If you want to learn network systematically, please check out my playlists. They are organized by topics. Thank you very much, and see you next time.